What's up y'all, Shuffle, and today we're going to be talking about provisions, and this is a guide for them. So if you want to know what items to take to which dungeons, then stay tuned. Before we get started, the obligatory stuff first. So I stream on Twitch four days a week, if you want to go check that out, jump into Discord if you want to talk to me and other cool people. Follow my Twitter if you want to just see random just garbage that I think of. And then of course, if you like the stuff and want to support the channel further, then drop in on Patreon. All of that is down below for thine eyes. And we're going to get started with this. So as I said, I'm going to tell you how to use these items, and then which ones to take where, and why to take them. I follow a very basic formula when I am preparing for expeditions. So the baseline, regardless of region that I'm going to, I take 10 torches, 12 food, 1 key, and 1 shovel. The rest depends on where I'm going. And then depending on the length of the mission, I multiply this by times two, if it's a medium mission, or times three, if it's a long mission. If you've ever looked at other guides or cheat sheets out there like Reddit or Google Image Search, I take more provisions usually than most people recommend. And this is because specifically with like torches and food, I've been screwed by hunger checks too many times to not value food, unless of course the region is plentiful in it, I'm looking at you warns. And then I take more torches than recommended because I like to drop my light level at least once or twice in a dungeon to get extra loot. So that's why I take the extra stuff. And then as far as multiplying it goes, that's just an easy way to remember what you need. The other reason this is the baseline is because every region in the game does make use of shovels and keys and torches and food. Except for the courtyard, but we'll talk about the courtyard later. One final note about food specifically is sometimes you just get into a fight where you get surprised at full torch, or the enemy crits you six times in like four turns. I don't know how they do it, but they did it. And you need to eat some extra food to help heal your units, so that is why I highly value food. The extra food also gives you the option of feasting when you are at camp, which also helps lower your stress as well as heal your people. So you can make a case of saying, yeah, well I take two less torches than you, or I take you know, one less shovel or something like that just because I usually don't find the obstructions in the hallways. But I think food is like, on average, just worth taking most of the time unless you're literally bare bones and scraping by on cash. Keep in mind that baseline amount that I talked about a minute ago because we will be assuming that that is being applied to every single run and then I'm going to talk about the specifics for each region on top of what I've already suggested. So the runes are interesting because there is a lot of treasure curio and there's some stress healing. There's a lot of interesting just stuff there that you can make a lot of use of for various reasons, whether monetarily or to help you in battle. But for the runes specifically, I prioritize holy water, herbs, and keys. This is because in the curio for the runes, there are the confession booths, which take holy water to heal 30 stress. There are holy urns, I think they're called. And when you use holy water on those, you get gems and stuff, which is really cool. And then there are a couple things like the damage up statue and the uh, healing fountain that you can find in rooms. And those also take holy water to just get better effects. So holy water alongside crusader usually does very well here just because there are a lot of things to use them on. So for a short mission, if I'm not taking crusader or something like that, I bring two. On a medium, I take three. And then on a long mission, I take four holy waters. I also take one, two, or three herbs respectively, so short, medium, and long missions. And this is because herbs go to the Iron Maidens as well as the Alchemy Tables. However, neither of these feel very common, so I think one or two herbs per run is usually safe enough. You will probably pop one over the course of at least a medium mission, and that's fine. As well as the monsters in the ruins themselves baseline don't really have any nasty debuffs. Like, they have debuffs that you should be aware of, but they don't have anything like you know, minus healing receive like arterial pinch gives you. So you don't really need herbs for that. So otherwise herbs just basically translate into treasure. Keeping in mind our base key allotment that I've already mentioned before, I take plus one key per level. So go back to what we were talking about before. With the ruins, there are a lot of things that require keys. There are the locked cabinets, there are the potential secret rooms, there are the heirloom chests, and there are also the locked sarcophagi. I guess, is it sarcophagi, sarcophagus? I don't know. But regardless, you need keys for those things, and those turn straight back into money, so keys are usually worth taking to the ruins as well. Just to piggyback off the gold guide that I made a couple days ago, the ruins is a really good place to make some easy money, not just because of the abundance of loot curio that are easy to disarm and give you really good returns. It's also the fact that the ruins has some pretty easy enemies overall, besides like courtiers kind of annoying. But otherwise, the ruins enemies are pretty tame compared to some of the stuff you see later. 
So going there is usually safe on top of getting a lot of money potentially. Next up is the cove, and the cove is another place where you can find a lot of money easily depending on what curio decide to cross your path. There are the big clams which give you money, there are the barnacle chests that give you money, and there are coral which you can use the herbs on to remove negative quirks, and that saves you money, as well as dead fish that give you a lot of gems. So there's a lot of money and monetary value just to be had in the cove which makes it another place to go if you're trying to make use of either purging quirks or getting extra money, much like the ruins. For the cove, no matter the length of mission, I usually purchase all of the herbs that are available in the shop unless I'm literally too broke to splurge on something like that. And that's because of a few reasons. Like I said, there are the coral reefs, which can purge your negative quirks. There are dead fish, which require herbs to disarm, I guess that's the right word in this case, and you get extra gems and stuff, so that's a really high return on investment. But also there are a couple nasty debuffs in the cove that you have to watch out for. Mainly Arterial Pinch, which is a very devastating bleed attack from Uka Crabs that starts showing up on Veteran and Champion. And so when they hit you with that, they also debuff your healing received which is very dangerous, so you're taking this very strong bleed that's going through your protection, so you can't really do much about it at that point, and you either have to tank it by just out healing it over time, or using a bandage, or using Plague Doctor, and if you have none of those things, or Suffer, shoutouts to Suffer, if you have none of those things, then you have to just tank it. And tanking it is very bad, because at veteran level, it's 24 points of bleed damage, at champion, it is 30 points of bleed damage, and this is not counting critical hits. So you're trying to heal through essentially 24 points of bleed damage minimum with a healing debuff on top of you. That becomes very difficult to do. So herbs help deal with that if you have nothing else to get rid of the bleed. So at least you can heal on top of it somewhat nicely. And herbs, like I said, they help with that. Not just the curio themselves, but then there are also other things in the cove to be worried about that require herbs, like the traps. So in other dungeons, when you hit traps, you take damage, you take stress. There's no exception to that in the cove, but the cove traps, instead of putting like a bleed or a blight on top of you, they actually put a really gross debuff on the hero that runs into it that subtracts, I think like 20 from your dodge and then a lot from your speed. Because of this, and as I said, the ability to purge negative quirks and get a bunch of money, I take all of the herbs that are available. The next thing to talk about are bandages. For a short mission, I will take three to the cove, for a medium or long mission, I take six. The reason is I just don't want to have two stacks of bandages going on in my inventory, so I'll cap out at six. But the six bandages are to deal with the aforementioned Uka Crabs and their arterial pinch, but also Octocestus is a bleed attack that is very common from the Pelagic Guardians. And then you have the Jellyfish, which can also bleed you with one of their two attacks. So there's a lot of bleed out there in the cove that require bandages if you don't have Plague Doctors. So having extra bandages is usually not a bad thing to do. Next up, I bring at least four shovels to the cove. If it's a short mission, even a medium mission, I'll take four. And then at most, I'll take five on a long mission. Or if I have a lot of money that I'm not too worried about getting a return on investment, then I'll take five to a medium. But the reason is shipwrecks feel somewhat common in the cove, and that's the obstruction here, much like the collapsed hallways and stuff in the ruins. But there are also the giant oysters, which require shovels to open for goodies. And then there are the barnacle covered chests, which also require shovels for goodies. So there are two different curia that require shovels, and then there is the presence of obstructions, which means that usually four shovels is a safe bet. Finally, for the cove, I actually take two more torches than I normally would to the cove specifically because the cove and the wheel are two different areas that the hallways can be a bit longer than normal sometimes and they're very just weird in how the, the dungeons lay out. There can be sometimes a lot of backtracking. So having extra torches is usually not a bad thing. So I usually take two more just to be safe. If it weren't for the enemies actually residing in the Warrens, it would be my favorite dungeon to run just because at medium missions you have this really cool grid-like pattern that is very nice and fun to do because you have these three tile hallways, you have branching paths, you can get around stuff, scouting is really impactful, and you really get to pick what you're doing. And I like that a lot. Sadly, the other regions don't really subscribe to this, so that kind of sucks. And then the Warrens also has some of the biggest jerk enemies in the game. That's neither here nor there, you want to know what to take to the Warrens, so besides the standard loadout that I talked about before, in the Warrens at any level I usually take two extra herbs, sometimes three or four if it's like a long mission, 
And the reason is, if you really need food, there are a couple different food curio in the warrens that you can use herbs on. But also, there are the ale barrels, I forget what they're called, but they're in hallways. And if you use herbs on those, you get a damage bonus of, I believe, 30%, which is very cool. So I like to take a couple herbs there for that. And there are also a couple debuffs. I believe Butcher Pig, uh, I think it's called Swine Chopper officially. And when it uses Butcher Cut, I think it has a healing debuff on top of that. So you may want to get rid of that. But otherwise, herbs are pretty useful to give you stuff that's not usually money. You get food, which can be very helpful for all the damage that's coming out of that place. And then you can also give yourself damage bonuses on top of that. I take two Holy Water to the Warrens just because sometimes you run into those bone piles. And those can give you some money, so that's usually worth it. And sometimes you want to use Holy Water to block either the bleed or the blight that's coming out of the enemies. So that's understandable. For short missions, I take four bandages, and then for long or medium missions, I take six. This is because of Butcher Pig specifically, which is very common. I feel like that enemy shows up in most monster mashes, so there is a reason to take bandages. But also, there are the traps in the Warrens that when they hit you, they're little buzz saws, and when they hit you, they have a chance to put bleed on you, so bandages help with that. And then finally, there are the Rack of Blade Curios, which you need a bandage to open those safely, and those give you money, so there's no real negative to bringing extra bandages for the Warrens. This last one, you don't actually have to do, I just do it because I'm abundantly cautious, and that is Anti-Venom. I take two Anti-Venom to the Warrens usually, it doesn't really matter the level, and that's because sometimes you get these rolls of enemies that have like two or three of the small corpse eaters, which I call Munchworms. And if you fight those with a drummer pig on deck that can mark you, with those things having reach across the entire player party, you can get hit with a mark and then they can just, you know, all in chain attack the same person. And if you get like one or two crits from them, you're taking like 12 points of blight damage just right there. So anti venom is very helpful for that specific situation. It's not the most common thing, but this is definitely an example of, like I said before, me playing very cautiously. The Warren's missions always have three tile hallways. I don't think it can be anything other than three tiles. So the hallways are very short, which means you actually don't need as many torches as normal. So if you're really in a pinch for money, you could shave off one or two from the normal amount that you take. But I still usually take the recommended amount that I listed at the top of the video. And that's because sometimes the Warrens can have these curio in the hallways that are a pile of scrolls. And if you use a torch on the pile of scrolls, it burns them and that purges a negative quirk off the person that did it. And that is very powerful, much like the cove having the coral. So I do like to keep the normal amount of torches for the Warrens in case of those, as well as the Cultist Witch who likes to lower your torch by hitting you with stressful incantation. The Wield! It's always between the Wield and the Warrens for what people hate more. I personally am kind of flip-flopping between which one I don't like more these days. I used to hate the Wield more, but the Warrens is kind of a pain. Anyway. The wield is interesting. The chance of obstruction, so things in the hallways, in this case trees, that can spawn up and require shovels, I believe it's increased in the wield. So you should always be taking a few extra shovels here. I specifically take four if it's even a short mission, and then four on a medium, and then sometimes five, kind of like the cove rule, on a long mission. And so you get the extra chance of obstructions, which is worth bringing a shovel for by itself. And then also there are the shallow graves that you run into, and those are fairly common, and I think that that is worth an extra shovel alone. Those can usually get you some pretty decent money, and if you find one or two in a run, it's pretty cool. Sometimes you find like two shallow graves on a medium mission in like the first two hallways, and you actually don't want to open it because even with four shovels, you may just run into three trees that you have to hack down with the shovel, and it's kind of scary to think about that, so definitely don't skimp on the shovels for the wield. Regardless of the length of the wield mission, I take six anti-venom, sometimes nine if it's a long mission, depending on what my party is, but I think six is usually enough, and that's because you don't really need it as much at Apprentice, you can probably get away with four, but definitely in Veteran and Champion wield, there are the Giants which can blight you, there are the Fungal Artillery that can blight you, there are the Crones that can blight you, there is Virgo that can blight you, there are the Scratchers that can blight you, so there's a lot of blight that comes out of this place from multiple enemies. So you have the chance of blight from the enemies, but also the Anti-Venom is used for two different curio. There are the tree stumps, which you can get treasure from by using anti-venom. That's very safe and easy to do. And then there are locked chests, which you can come across. And the locked chests, which are the little black iron strong boxes that are in the hallways, 
Those can use keys to open, but keys are more expensive than anti-venom, and you can use anti-venom to open those instead. So you save just a little bit of gold by buying anti-venom instead, and also the anti-venom doubles as a defensive thing against a lot of the monsters in the wield. So I definitely recommend hoarding anti-venom if you're going to the wield, not only for the monsters, but also a bunch of the curio there that are very common. I do usually take one thing of medicinal herbs to the wield. It doesn't really matter the level of the dungeon, I just take one because you can run across the dead carcass in the hallway that you can use the herbs on and get some extra food and that's not a bad thing. They're not as common as they are in the Wardens for instance so that's why I don't recommend taking more than one but usually in a medium or a long mission you should come across one and that's usually worth an herb. Going back to the same reasoning as the Cove and talking about our predetermined loadout at the top of the episode I usually take two or three more extra torches to the wheel depending on the length of the dungeon just because the wheel has very long hallways I think it has some of the longest in the game and you can find yourself backtracking through them sometimes and so having extra torches helps immensely with that plus there are enemies besides the normal cultist witch that can lower your torch there are crones which lower your torch as well and so having extra torches in case those show up really helps out a lot the courtyard is the final thing we're talking about and the courtyard is very hard to suggest what to take because there are two different things of courtyard there are the static missions that are the quest missions so these are the ones that you do to either open the courtyard or when you have opened the courtyard and you have to deal with the bosses that take sometimes multiple weeks to clear out a very large dungeon that does not change itemizing for those with provisions is a much different and more difficult thing to suggest and it really depends on the teams that you're running for instance if you're running plague doctor who can cure blight and bleed you don't have to run as many curing provisions like bandages and anti-venom you can run other stuff and if you have a jester you don't need torches for accuracy stuff like that so when you're itemizing for the courtyard it's very difficult to say what you should take because it's all going to depend on your party so in the case of courtyard specifically i'm not going to be talking about the huge multi-week invitational expeditions i'm going to be talking about just regular courtyard missions either the post-game courtyard mission to get extra cc trinkets or if you're just doing regular ones to get blood or i guess just adventure there because you want to for those missions specifically i take between five and eight torches depending on my party and the length of the mission the torches are very good not just to give yourself plus three accuracy for hitting them once you're inside the courtyard also another small tip the courtyard is always considered max light so things like ancestor candle and camouflage cloak will work there and having the extra torches to give yourself some extra accuracy or to hit the weird fog clouds which count as obstructions as well as there are a couple different curio I believe the giant thronging hives or whatever those are require torches for gems and money and then there are also the cocoon eggs that you can burn to heal 30 stress I usually take four shovels regardless of what the normal courtyard mission is there are a couple reasons for this the first is there are the regular hallway obstructions which is collapsed rubble thingies so you need shovels for those there are also curio like the potted vases or like the potted plants and the uh, weird skull things on the tables you use shovels on those to get loot which is very nice and then there's also the chance of getting the non quest item wine crate the quest item wine crate gives you blood but if you use the shovel on the non quest version of it you can break it open for firewood so you can even camp in a short mission that's really cool so for any courtyard mission that you do there is the chance of these little wine boxes popping up and you can use a shovel on there and camp at any time that's usually something worth taking a shovel for just by itself if stress is going to be an issue for the party i currently have either someone's coming in with 50 stress or i just don't have a lot of speed or control on the team so stress might get out of control for you know a couple heroes i'll take one or two holy waters usually i don't take more than that I don't use them for defensive purposes in that case either. This is strictly just to use on the blood fountains because once you put holy water in there, it's like the throbbing cocoon that we talked about before with the torch. You can drop holy water into the fountains and heal 30 stress. That's really nice. The final one is pretty variable to talk about and that is the amount of blood that you're taking. If you're doing a short courtyard mission and no one has crimson curse, you probably don't need any blood or you should just take like one. If you have a couple people that are cursed, then you should take two or three blood appropriately. If it's still a short mission, you shouldn't need more than four to complete the entire thing just to be safe. 
but again you will also be finding blood in the courtyard so you don't want to go overboard the other reason you want to take blood is because of shrews so people actually hate the shrews and i didn't like the shrews at first either there are the chance to get really interesting trinkets from the shrews if you just drop blood blood is very plentiful and if you're running courtyard you're gonna be finding a lot of it even though you're gonna have to deal with crimson curse and so if you're bringing blood to the courtyard it's usually worth just opening the loot box that is the shrew because sometimes you can high roll and get something very nice as i said before blood is rather difficult to suggest a specific amount of for these missions so like i said if you have people that have curse bring a couple blood for them specifically but you should always bring maybe two or three in case you run into shrews you'll notice in this entire video i have not suggested taking laudanum laudanum is usually not worth taking at all unless you're doing endless harvest the only other time it is somewhat applicable is in the courtyard because they actually make use of the horror mechanic on a couple different enemies otherwise most of the time the only other things that have this horror debuff are madmen which are somewhat rare and then ghouls which you don't see till later and again they don't always use howl sometimes they die before then so laudanum is usually a waste of money which means you probably shouldn't be buying it all right y'all that's gonna do it for this one thanks for watching let me know what you're thinking down below if you like the video give it a thumbs up like i said if you have any other tips that i missed be sure to talk about it with myself and all of the cool people that will be watching this video as for the other stuff, like I said before, I stream on Twitch four days a week. There's a bunch of other social media stuff in the box below if you want to go check that out. Like Discord, Patreon, Twitter. All of it has something cool for you to partake in. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.